Hey what's up guys. In today's video we are listing the top 5 best graphics cards in 2022. Through extensive research on Amazon products, we have put together a list of options that meet the needs of different types of buyers. On our channel from 1 to 5 we have got you covered. For more information check the box down and don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get started. As we approach the lowest end of the price and performance ladder with NVIDIA's desktop Ampere lineup, the cuts to processing power may have gone too far. This is the first GA106 card, with a 192-bit memory interface and 12GB VRAM, which is quite a bit better than the RTX 3050 but still a big step down from GA104. With 26% fewer GPU cores compared to the 3060 Ti, and less memory bandwidth, Overall performance is only on the level of the RTX 2070, so, two and a half years later, you can now match a $500 graphics card with a $330 alternative. Unfortunately, demand still surpasses supply, and the cheapest RTX 3060 cards typically go for around $400. Still, given the performance we saw in our testing, the RTX 3060 delivers a great overall value, Factoring in ray tracing and DLSS performance, VRAM capacity isn't a problem, and there are a few instances where the 3060 starts to close the gap with the 3060 Ti. It never quite gets there however, and the 3060 Ti may be the better choice if you can find one at a reasonable price. At present, it's a $125 jump to the 3060 Ti, making this or one of AMD's offerings a much better value, on the other hand, discounting ray tracing and DLSS, in our testing the RTX 3060 ends up being roughly the same performance as AMD's RX 5700 XT, 18 months later. Not exactly something to set the world on fire, but then that's typical of mainstream parts. With DXR and DLSS, however, the 3060 can even trade blows with AMD's RX 6800. Start with the Navi 21 GPU and then cut down the various functional units to create a smaller die that can sell at lower prices and you have AMD's Navi 22 and the RX 6700 XT. The RX 6750 XT is basically the same GPU, with a slight boost to clock speeds, memory speeds, and power consumption, about 5% faster overall, but with a 10% price hike. The 6700 XT has the same number of GPU cores as the previous generation RX 5700 XT, but significantly higher clock speeds and more cash give it about a 25% boost to performance, at higher settings and resolutions at least. When we tested AMD's RX 6700 XT, it hit clock speeds in excess of 2.5 GHz during gaming sessions, and that's at stock, on the reference card. With some tuning and overclocking, we were able to hit speeds of 2.7 to 2.8 GHz, still without cooking the GPU. That's very impressive, and factory overclocked cards can push even higher clocks, though they also cost more. In our performance testing, the RX 6700 XT traded blows with the RTX 3070 and RTX 3060 Ti. It's a bit faster than the latter and a bit slower than the former, so the going price of around $480 is reasonable. Still, if we include pretty much any games with DLSS or ray tracing, the 6700 XT comes in behind the 3060 Ti and almost looks like a 3060 competitor, this card has moved up in our overall rankings thanks to its excellent online prices. It's currently available at prices starting just below the official MSRP, and it costs about $50 less than the cheapest RTX 3060 Ti while delivering comparable performance. Keep an eye on the newer RX 6750 XT as well, as it could end up being a better option if prices continue to drop. For some, the best graphics card is the fastest card, pricing be damned. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3090 Ti caters to this category of user. At more than double the official starting price of the RTX 3080, performance is only moderately better, 20 to 30 percent, in most workloads. It's also only 5, 10 percent faster than the previous RTX 3090, with an even higher MSRP. But looking at online prices, the 3090 Ti may only cost a couple hundred more than a 3090, and who are we kidding? Anyone seriously considering either of these probably doesn't need to worry about a few Benjamins. 
the RTX 3090 Ti will reign as NVIDIA's top GPU until the next generation NVIDIA Ada Lovelace GPUs arrive. It sports a complete GA102 chip with 84 SMS, so there's no room or time for a new Titan card. NVIDIA has said as much as well that the 3090 Ti brings Titan class performance and features, specifically the 24 GB VRAM, into the GeForce brand. If you simply must have the fastest graphics card available, the RTX 3090 Ti isn't likely to be surpassed until this fall, it's not just about gaming of course. The RTX 3090 Ti has NVLink support, which is arguably more useful for professional apps and GPU compute than SLE. The 24GB of GDDR6X memory is also helpful in a variety of content creation applications. Blender for example frequently showed 35% higher performance compared to the 3080, and over twice the performance of the Titan RTX. Just watch out for lower than expected performance in some of the SPEQPerf apps, where the Titan RTX has additional features turned on in its drivers that aren't enabled for GeForce cards. You'll need the even more expensive NVIDIA RTX A6000 for the full professional driver suite. AMD's RX 6950 XT challenges the RTX 3090 Ti in traditional rasterization performance and wins in a few SPEQPerf tests. But if you want the absolute fastest graphics card right now, NVIDIA wins, especially if you run games with ray tracing and DLSS enabled. Just don't be surprised when NVIDIA's next-generation extreme GPUs arrive and make the 3090 Ti look like lukewarm gravy. AMD's Radeon RX 6800 XT is the best card for Team Red. The RX 6800 XT provides a massive boost in performance and features relative to the previous generation RX 5700 XT, as well as adding ray tracing support via DirectX ray tracing or Fukin RT. In our testing, the RX Radeon 6900 XT is technically about 5 to 7% faster, but it theoretically costs 54% more. That's not a great deal, especially since you don't get more VRAM or any other extras. Do pay attention to the current online prices. However, as the 6900 only costs about $100 extra and might be worth the spend right now, the Navi 21 GPU was affectionately dubbed Big Navi prior to launch by the enthusiast community, and we got exactly what we wanted. It's over twice the size of the previous generation Navi 10, with twice the shader cores and twice the RAM. Clock speeds are also boosted into the 2.1 to 2.4 GHz range, depending on the card model, and AMD did all this without substantially increasing power requirements, the RX 6800 XT has a 300 watts TBP. Slightly lower than the RTX 3080's 320 watts TBP, a big part of AMD's performance comes thanks to the massive 128 megabytes infinity cache. It improves the effective bandwidth by 119%, according to AMD. We're confident that few if any games in the coming years are going to need more than 16 GB, so the 6800 XT is in a great position in that area, what's not to like? The ray tracing performance is mediocre. Maybe it's because DXR games are more likely to be optimized for NVIDIA's RTX GPUs, but overall the 6800 XT comes in slightly behind the RTX 3070 in ray tracing performance. And there are several games where it falls behind by up to 25%. And that's without turning on DLSS, which even in quality mode can improve performance of RTX cards by 20-40%, to 40%, sometimes more. AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution can help, but it's not as widely used and doesn't match the quality of DLSS. FSR 2.0 helps to change that, but only three games using the tech are currently out. Price and availability aren't great, but at least the RX 6800 XT can now be found online for under $800 that only about $30 less than the RTX 3080, which we prefer thanks to its improved feature set. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3080 sports NVIDIA's latest Ampere architecture. It's over 30% faster than the previous Gen 2080 Ti, and supposedly costs $500 less. When we tested the new RTX 3080 Ti, it didn't manage to supplant the incumbent, thanks to its significantly higher pricing. However, do keep an eye out for the RTX 3080 12GB cards, which at present seems to carry about a $50 price premium, a premium well worth paying in our book, 
If you're serious about maxing out all the graphics settings and you want to play at 4K or 1440p, this is the card to get. It's mostly overkill for 1080p gaming, unless you're running the latest ray tracing games, in which case DLSS support should also help performance. If you skip the first round of RTX GPUs, the RTX 30 series might finally get you on board the ray tracing train. With potentially double the ray tracing performance of Turing, the RTX 3080 is your best bet at playing games in all their ray traced glory without nuking the piggy bank, Ampere also brings improved tensor cores for DLSS. A technology that continues to proliferate among recent game releases. NVIDIA's RT and DLSS performance are also quite a bit faster than what you get from AMD's new RX 6000 cards, which is a good thing as NVIDIA sometimes falls behind in traditional rasterization performance. AMD offers the Universal FSR 2.0 as an alternative to DLSS, but so far it's only in a handful of games, prices on the RTX 3080 have been extremely inflated for most of the past two years, but things are getting down to reasonable levels now. We typically can find cards for around $800, sometimes including the 12GB variant. It's not necessarily the best value, but this remains our best pick for a fast GPU right now.